Back in the basement again today, I want to give you guys an update on the Juggernaut AI peaking block I'm currently running. It's a four week peak. I'm halfway through and last time we spoke, I had just hit a 550 pound squat for a top single. So the way these first two weeks have worked is I'm having three top singles throughout the course of the week. Monday is squats, Thursday is deadlift, Friday is bench. First week of Thursday, I had a single at 585, which I thought in my mind was going to go super easy, giving my previous training history on this training cycle. But as you can see, it did not go as planned. It was a grinder. I rated it at an RPE 10. I didn't really feel good about it. And one of the things that I am very bad at, it happens every time I'm close to the end of a training cycle, prepping for a meet, a test out, whatever you wanna call it, I tend to start seeing some of these heavier lifts and notice my form breaking down. And that's when I try to start addressing some of my inconsistencies. So one of the problems I've been having with deadlifts is that my first rep is always a little bit loose. I'm not as tight as I need to be. And for some reason, I thought that it would be a great time to really start focusing on some new cues and trying to do things a little bit differently, which is never the case. If you're going to do that, that's fine. Do it at the beginning of a training cycle when you're doing lighter weight for higher reps, more volume, and you can really ingrain those movement patterns into your own lifting, and you can practice a lot of those accessory movements to work on those weak points, not when you're three weeks out from completing a basically six month training cycle. My bad. However, the saving grace of week one was then that my bench was at 315 single on Friday and that flew up, felt super, super good. I was really pumped about that. And I'm really trying to be this more mentally focused and positive person throughout the course of this training cycle, which I had the tendency to get on myself quite a bit if you've been watching any of my training logs over the past 10 years or so. So I really tried to put that Thursday deadlift session behind me and just chalk it up to me being an idiot, which happens more often than you'd probably think. Although the fact that I have 10 years worth of training videos up here, you can probably find several instances of me being an idiot. A strong, lightweight material. Is it adamantium? No, not adamantium. Now this weekend threw a little bit of an unexpected curveball at me, which is fine. Life gets in the way. I train for fun and for peace of mind, but I got my second vaccine shot on Sunday. Felt great that day. I didn't have any bad reactions to the first shot. And come Monday, which was my top squat single of that week, I was super fatigued, like literally just getting out of bed. I felt achy, was super tired, didn't have a fever, didn't feel nauseous, no headache, anything like that. Just super fatigued. And that was very abnormal for me. So I did the smart thing, which was take the day completely off. Hey, speaking of being smart, I'm sure you guys have heard of Magic Spoon by now. I've talked about them several times on this channel. They've been gracious enough to sponsor a lot of these training blocks that I'm showing you. And speaking of being smart in blocks, a smart building block for any well-balanced breakfast is a lot of protein. I like to get my protein in early in the morning because chances are when I'm doing stuff like lunch and dinner or even late night snacking, typically doesn't have a ton of protein. So Magic Spoon's come out with a wide variety of great tasting cereals that really remind me of the cereals I used to eat back in the day when I was a youngin, but with much better nutrition value behind them. You know, these things have very high protein. You're looking at 14 grams of protein per serving. You're looking at only four grams of net carbs and zero grams of sugar. They're gluten-free, GMO-free, soy-free, grain-free, keto-friendly. I don't know how they pack 14 grams of protein in each serving, but they managed to do that and they have a flavor for everybody. And if you're watching this video and click on the link in the description box below, you can save $5 off your variety pack order by using the code basement brand. And again, click on the link in the description below, check out Magic Spoon and their high protein cereals and use basement Brandon to save $5 off your order. Now, because of that, that kind of threw my rest of the training week into a little bit of a wrench. So I decided to train Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, straight through. So skip my normal off day, which means my squats and deadlifts were gonna be closer together. But you know what? I woke up Tuesday morning feeling fantastic. And I've really been trying to, like I said, keep myself in a better positive mind state throughout my training. And during warmups for squat, I was trying to amp myself up a little bit within reason because can't really fake it till you make it in some instances, but my sets were feeling good. And I was telling myself like, let's go, let's get it. You know, just talking to myself and give me those 
own mental cues to really perform better. And you know what? It worked really well. My top single of squats for 575 moved probably better than any squat single has in several years, if not ever. It was heavy weight and it wasn't super fast or anything, but I felt my form was super consistent. I feel like I didn't have my knee cave in. I feel like my hips didn't shoot up. So that 575 single was really having me feeling good. Now, this deadlift didn't fly up or anything like that. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I hit 615 for two reps, so this should have been a gimme, and I, that's what I really told myself. Again, positive reinforcement of most of the work has been done. It's all about just execution at this point in these last couple of weeks, and although it was a little bit slow, it was consistent, which I'm happy about, and is 25 pounds heavier than the week previous, and I actually rated it at a slightly less RPE. I'm talking like half an RPE, so instead of a 10, it maybe was like a nine and a half. And you know what? I'll take that as a huge win. Now, speaking of huge wins, I rode that momentum from last week's bench session into this one, had a top single at 325, and it moved really good. So much so, in fact, that I thought to myself, I'm gonna throw some more weight on there. Now, throughout this whole program, I've really been preaching, adhere to the program, be as honest as you can. But to be honest, I needed a little bit of a victory for myself, or at least to try it. And the good thing with me for bench is because I'm benching so frequently right now, four times per week, pretty much all competition style movement, I can add that weight on and I know even if I don't get it, it's not gonna mess me up as much as doing so in squats or deadlift where I'm really gonna fatigue my lower back and it's gonna kind of set me back a little bit. Bench, no problem for me. Probably because I don't bench that much, but I loaded up 345 and it was gross, it was a grinder, but huge win because number one, I got it. Number two, that's five pounds heavier than my all-time best meat PR at about 10 pounds heavier in body weight. And it's only five pounds off my all-time best gym PR of 350 pounds, or the scientific term, tree fitty. So really happy with that, and that was a great way to close out the first half of the peaking block. Now, I'm actually in my basement now training on the first day of week three. I'm gonna give you an update on that later just because this is an interesting twist and turn in the Juggernaut AI. You'd think after almost six months of using it, I'd have seen everything, but these last two weeks are actually combined. So I'm training my normal Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but it also has me training on the weekend. So it's a Saturday, Sunday, and then also some days next week. So these last two weeks are actually combined. So that's new. Also training on the weekend is new, has some active recovery stuff planned in. So of course I'm gonna chronicle that all leading up to a test out on I think like June 5th or June 6th, which is a Saturday, which is also gonna be super interesting because I'm gonna be doing a mock meet here in the basement by myself but my wife's gonna be out of town, which means I have the boys to myself that entire weekend, which isn't a big deal. I'm a good dad. I'm a decent YouTuber, but I'm a real good dad. But I typically train when they nap, and my eldest, who's almost four, sometimes doesn't nap every day. So depending on if he naps or not, I may or may not be testing out Saturday, and if he doesn't, then I'll just have to adjust and figure out a better time to do it. But that's okay, because life gets in the way, and a lot of that stuff is more important in the grand scheme of things. And I think I'm, a lot of times I'm just saying that just because I had a really good last two weeks. So hoping the momentum continues, hoping you're enjoying these series. Let me know any questions you have in the comment section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.